uh, was a body of water going by, and it was fairly, it was pretty wide, and I could see a couple of limbs once in a while going by. So it had to be a river because it was too big to be a stream. So I finally got up and I walked the, the stream I was following and emptied into the, into the river, which I said turned out to be the east branch of the Penobscot. And I followed that river downstream for a very short ways when I looked across and I could see these two cabins up on a knoll, which you'll see in the film, in the DVD. And I'm by one cabin, there was a canoe, a couple of canoes, I think. And I looked down at the river bank and there was a dock and another canoe, which you'll see. So I knew somebody had to be there. And uh, maybe, you know, either that or there was food or telephone or whatever. So I started hollering. Well, I got the bright idea I'd swim over. <laughs> well, you know, after a while, my brain finally kicked in. And I said, I can't do that. I, I'm too weak. And, I, and there was a pretty good current going. And I knew enough about currents and rivers uh, not to mess around. Then I got the bright idea, guys. I'd get a log and I'd float across. Good idea, huh? No, that's just a good idea. Of course, if I floated across, I'd probably be eight miles downstream before I ever got on the other side. When I saw a tree had fallen into the river, it, the roots had been eroded, I think, and I climbed out on it just a short ways into the, uh, into the, in the, into the limbs. And I started hollering. And Mrs. Beck Warren told me later on, she uh, and Mr. And she was in the kitchen cooking. And Mr. Big Warren was in the, in, on a couch, resting his eyes, and when well, he should have been looking for me. <laughs> anyway, she said, "Nelson, go out and see what that noise is." And he said, "No, it's just a wild animal." But she convinced him finally, and I saw him come out. And then he turned around and went back in. I didn't think he saw me, and I passed out. Mm -hmm. And I, luckily, I didn't fall out of that tree into the. But I was pretty well entwined in those limbs. I couldn't have fallen out. Uh, he had gone in to tell Mrs. Malloran to call the ranger station. I don't know if it's at Stacyville or or Sherman Mills or whatever, but to tell him that he he knew who it was and he was coming across canoe across and rescue me, which he did. He just kind of reached up, he told me, just pick me up, put me in the canoe. I didn't weigh anything. And not quite like that. And he said, we carried on a conversation, but I don't remember it. And then he tried to take that gunny sack away from me, and I wouldn't let him have it. I, he said, I guess, he, I guess you want it. I, you know, I did, and I kept, mm -hmm. he let me keep it. Uh, I woke up in Mrs. McMoran's arms, and our faces were about that far apart. And, she, and all of a sudden, we both started crying. She's crying because she's a mother. Oh, this poor boy. <laughs> I'm crying because I'm glad I'm going to get something to eat <laughs> and I'm going to get back to my folks. So she put me in bed and covered me with some kind of salve to kill the bug bites, uh, the stings. Uh, her son had uh, lived in the, I would come up and stay in the other cabin. And so she got some underwear and socks. And they were pretty big on me, but she put them on me. Uh, and then fed me tomato soup. And then she said, and I was pretty tired, and I guess I was kind of dozing. So she went out, but on two occasions she came in, she'd find me on the floor. I guess I, the bed was too soft or something. <laughs> I was used to the hard ground and that. Then she came in and told me, we're going to call your mother. She said, Eastern Maine General Hospital, visiting your dad, who got injured looking for you. And he had a uh, guy in front of him when they were searching, let a branch go, and it came back, hit him in the eye. So they're going to call her, and okay. Of course, in those days, they had crank phones, and it was a party line. <laughs> and all those know what a party line yeah. is. So when they got hold, got crank in there, I guess everybody was starting to listen in, because <laughs> some people like to listen in conversations. <laughs> and, and then they found out who it was, and all of a sudden all these questions are coming across the telephone. And Mrs. Big Warren said, get the heck off the phone. You're going to talk to his mother, and I did. And the next day, my mother came up, because my father couldn't. I met her after the rapids, which you'll see, and uh, got to the town of Grindstone took me in this ambulance that looks like a hearst, <laughs> and off I went. So, that's the story. Uh, what I'd like, is Chris going to do this? And, yeah. Uh, he's going to show this uh, eight-minute uh, flick, uh, TVD, uh, which will take you back 73 years ago, 
my uncle took uh, Phil, and I told you about we converted it finally, transported it into a DVD. No music, black and white, and I'll narrate it, and I hope you enjoy it.